With the outbreak of war between Germany and the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941, the invaders were immediately confronted with the unprecedented heroism and inexplicable dedication of soldiers and officers of the Red Army. Literally from the first days of the war the aggressors realized that this war would not be the same as in Europe. For example, the case of one KV tank, which alone fought against a German division. Memories of this unique tank battle, which took place on June 24, 1941 near the Lithuanian town of Rezinii, left the commander of the Wehrmacht tank group Erhard Raus. The Soviet tank KV-1 for two days held back the attack of an entire tank division. The tank took the only favorable position on the road to the city. Convoys of enemy heavy equipment and trucks, trying to bypass the KV, got stuck in the swamp. The Germans managed to hit the track of the Soviet tank, but the KV continued to fire without moving from the spot, and its crew was not going to surrender. According to Rouse, the Germans' tank guns could not penetrate the armor of the Soviet KV. This behemoth first destroyed more than a dozen trucks, then the tank shot the Germans' artillery battery and smashed an anti-aircraft gun together with its crew. It was only on the second day of the battle that the Soviet tank was able to be shot down by anti-aircraft fire. Rouse noted that one Soviet tank inflicted more damage on a Wehrmacht tank division than an entire Soviet division. The Germans were deeply shocked by the heroism of the Soviet tankers and buried them with military honors. For a long time Hitlerites could not understand what sense it made for Soviet soldiers to continue fighting in the Brest fortress already occupied by the Wehrmacht. Its Commandant General Walter von Unruh wrote in his diary. What do they want? After all, they will not get out of the encirclement. Only by August 1941, more than a month after the capture of this citadel by the Germans, the Nazis were able to destroy the last firing points of the Brest Fortress defenders. The last battle on the territory of the fortress was recorded on July 23, as a result of which six German soldiers and officers were wounded. Lieutenant General Schlieper, who commanded one of the divisions at the storming of the Brest Fortress, wrote in his report that the Russians have excellent infantry training and a remarkable will to fight. The feat committed on July 17, 1941 in the area of Sokolnichi village is confirmed by documentary evidence of several eyewitnesses both on the part of Hitlerites and local residents of Sokolnichi, where this artillery battle took place. Senior Sergeant Nikolai Syratinin for two hours of holding back one of the tank units of Guderian's army single-handedly destroyed 11 tanks, 7 armored vehicles and about 60 enemy soldiers and officers with 76mm gun. Syratinin was left to cover the withdrawal of an artillery battery retreating under the onslaught of Guderian's tank army units. German reconnaissance did not establish the presence of Soviet units on the path of the offensive and therefore the enemy vehicles moved openly. Syratinin by the fire of his cannon hit on the bridge over the river the head and trailing vehicles of the column of enemy equipment of 59 tanks and armored vehicles, and began methodically knocking out the rest. Only after two hours it was possible to establish the location of Syratinin's cannon and mortar fire to kill a lone artilleryman who refused to surrender. One of the officers of the tank division, Friedrich Henfeld, wrote in his diary, it was found a year later at Henfeld's dead body, that it was decided to bury Syratinin with military honors the Germans seriously thought that an entire battery was fighting against them. A local resident Olga Versbitskaya, who knew German, translated to her fellow villagers the enthusiastic words of Hitlerites about Syratinin's feet the Germans brought her to the grave of the artillerymen specially for this purpose. Colonel Eric Schneider said as an example to his subordinates the bravery of the Russian soldier, adding that if the Germans fought like that, the Third Reich would have conquered the whole world long ago. This chilling story, confirmed by award documents, which can now be found on the internet, took place in early November 1941. Rider Dmitry Avsharenko, delivering ammunition and food to his machine gun company, was surrounded by more than 50 Hitlerites, among them were three officers. 
One of the officers knocked the rifle from Ovcherenko and began to interrogate. Then the soldier grabbed an axe lying in the wagon and with one stroke cut off the Hitler's head. Then Ovcherenko threw three grenades into the cluster of Germans. After that he chased after another officer, wounded by grenade splinters, caught up with him in the village vegetable garden and also cut off the Nazi's head. The rest of the Germans, together with the third surviving officer, ran away in terror, having thrown their weapons. In total, the rider killed more than 20 German soldiers. Avcherenko collected documents and trophy weapons, took all this to the location of his regiment. Honored with the title of Hero of the Soviet Union, the warrior died in 1945. These are just a few examples of heroism of the Red Army soldiers during the Second World War. In fact, there were many hundreds of them, famous and unknown feats that shocked the Germans. Even at the very beginning of the war, judging by the surviving diaries and letters of soldiers and officers of the Wehrmacht, many of them, observing how the Russians were fighting, wrote that they had no hope of returning home alive.